know there. In this lesson, we'll be using gouache paint to create this science fiction inspired painting. So let's get into it. Before I create a sci-fi piece, I like to work out a story and how it will be composed. In this first thumbnail, I drew a conventional spaceman, but as you can see, the ground was a bit flat and boring and my planet was too big. In the second thumbnail, I increased the size of the spaceman, gave him a weapon and reduced the size of the planet. Then I decided the picture might read better if the image was flipped and I added a goldfish bowl helmet to our brave explorer because it's kind of quirky. The planet was still too big, so to reduce it, I put some distance from the foreground and swapped his weapon for a tool. Now I feel like I've got a bit of a story, a maroon spaceman trying to repair his crashed spaceship in a planet far away. Once I've worked out the story, I create a more refined drawing and colour guide. You can find these in the link to the lesson PDF above. We're going to use Montmartre gouache paints for this project. Gouache is a fantastic medium. It's water soluble, blends nicely and dries to a semi-matte finish, which photographs really well. You see a lot of gouache projects created on paper, but today we're going to use a wooden painting board. First, we'll need to prepare it correctly. For this project, I'll be using the Montmartre gouache brush set. Apply a thin layer of titanium white acrylic. Let this dry and apply a clear textured gesso. The titanium white gives our board the white point of paper and the clear gesso gives it a similar surface to paper, slightly porous with some tooth. Next, transfer the outline of the scene onto the prepared board. I decided to make our spaceman's head a little larger to give him more of a comic book feel and also add a bit more character by expressing his concern about his environment to you. Take your time with this step, skillful rendering won't save bad drafting. You can easily erase any graphite from the gessoed surface with a standard eraser. Squeeze out some ultramarine blue onto an easy clean palette and start to lay in the paint from the left as quickly as you can. Gouache dries fast and although you can reactivate it, your paint surface will be broken if you allow it to partially dry and then paint over it. Once the ultramarine blue is dry, lay some cerulean blue over the top of it. Because gouache does reactivate, this top coat will blend slightly in with the undercoat. This is actually going to add more interest to our top coat. Just make sure you don't work it too much. Let some of your undercoat come through this top coat to add as much interest to your atmosphere as possible. You'll also find that your second coat tends to go on smoother. Create a sky blue from cerulean and titanium white and lay it into the looming giant planet. You'll want to lay down quite a thick coat and blend it into the background using strokes that follow the direction of where the atmosphere and shadow line of the planet meet. Flip the board and paint in some cerulean blue with a touch of white along the top of the mountain range. Gently fade this out as you move down the board. The colour is quite subtle but the variation adds more interest. Reflip your board and lay some pure titanium white into the leading edge of the planet and roughly blend it into the centre. Follow the form of the planet to give it shape. A large planet has a moon so we're going to lay in some titanium white into that area. And into this white add some lamp black on the underside to suggest a shadow. Blend this in so there are no hard edges. We then paint our goldfish bowl helmet with some cerulean blue with a touch of white added and cut in around our spaceman's head. Then lay a Prussian blue shadow into the back side of the head and some reflection lines by mixing cerulean blue and white in equal proportions. We're going to put some distant stars into our atmosphere. Create a paper mask and tape it over the planet. Using a hog bristle brush, have some fun and flick titanium white to add your stars. Now we've finished our atmosphere, we can start on the distant mountain range. Cut these in with a flat brush. We're going to use some yellow ochre, titanium white and orange yellow. Some of our underlying colour will come through, but this is just going to create even more diversity within our colour. Once our mountain range is in, add a little crimson to the mix and blend this with the coat you've just laid down. Paint this tone into the middle range as well. Now to give our mountains some perspective. Add some burnt umber to the mix and lay it over the distant mountains. This will give them some shape and stop them looking too two-dimensional. Lay some cobalt blue into the foreground to suggest the area is in shade. 
blend some of this blue into your middle ground as well, but don't take it up to the top of your middle range. The light in our artwork is coming from the right hand side, so lay in some shadow on the left of any distant mountain peaks. Using the colour to suggest shadow definitely ties our composition together. To create some distant space rocks, use a small flat to dab on some shapes and follow the lay of the mountains. You don't want to make them all the same, so keep your placement random and don't overdo it. You need some space between the rocks for realism. Now lay in some black shapes across the foreground. These move in a pattern in the same direction and we'll mix up the random shapes with some dry brushing. Dry brushing is a great technique to use if you want to create complex texture. The trick is not to overcharge your brush with too much paint so you can achieve a broken look with your coat. So our background is finished and we can start on our spaceman. Cover the painting with some cling film to protect the surface from wet paint. It also allows me to rest my hand on the surface of the painting. Squeeze out some titanium white, lemon yellow, vermilion, crimson, black, scarlet and sap green. If you're wanting to recreate our colours here, make sure you refer to the supplied colour guide to help you get the tonal modelling right. What we're really trying to do is break the spaceman into elements and tackle one element at a time. Start with the lightest area first and lay in vermilion. Then blend the darker tone of scarlet up to the vermilion and mix in the crimson up to the scarlet. For any really dark red tones, mix some green into the crimson. If you need to lighten an area, you can mix a lighter tone over the top and blend it in. Add black into our spaceman's helmet base and blend white into the highlight area. This suggests that it has a curved shape. The light is coming from the right hand side of the painting, so the right side of our spaceman's face will be in highlight. Lay in a wash made from yellow ochre, titanium white and a touch of lemon yellow into the face. Create another small mix the same way, but this time add some vermilion and a touch of scarlet and paint it into the other side of the face. Concentrate more red around the eyes. Let the coat dry, add some white to the mix and lay it into any high points. Darken the eyes and continue to model the face with your colours until you're happy with the result. I'm going to use a blue fine tip marker to add the eyeballs because they're so intricate. The great thing about markers is that they are compatible with gouache. Now paint the communications cap in white, remembering the light source. Darken the tone with a touch of lamp black to create a neutral grey and lay this into the part of the head that's in shadow. Then go back over the cap with some white to bring out the highlights. Add a stripe of yellow for a splash of colour. 
After the cap is done, add some dark grey made from black and white and lay it over the entire spanner. Then add your shadow lines in black and dry brush your highlights on with titanium white. Although gouache is often thought of as an opaque watercolour, it has many great standout qualities of its own. It's ideal for illustrating book covers, comics and even outdoor sketching. Straight out of the tube, it's opaque and really heavily pigmented, which gives you great texture when painting, but it becomes translucent when you add water. It also dries very quickly to a matte finish. So take some time out and give gouache a go. It's a lot of fun to use and you never know, you might just find that you're inspired by what you can create.